I don't know if you've been feeling tired or worn out, apathetic, maybe lethargic, but I know that today's show is going to fill you with power, give you vision for the future, and show you the life that the Holy Spirit wants you to have. It's a life of miracles, of glory, of actually seeing God move in you and through you. So my guest today, Frankie Mazapika, has not only experienced the power of God, but he has the ability to, I think, encourage you to step fully in. So Frankie, yes, welcome. I'm so excited you're here. I, okay, I have a billion questions okay, for you. Okay, let's, let's rock and roll. <laughs> let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, but let's start maybe a little bit on the beginning of your journey, and then we're going to pray for people. We're going to have a Holy Spirit fun time. Perfect. Um, but what kind of led you into, I guess, the supernatural life that you're living in now? Okay, well, you and I have something in common. Yes. We both love Charles Finney. Yes. And um, one of the things about reading his books is it's kind of like this tension of being inspired and discouraged at the same time. <laughs> totally. The, the inspired part of it is you realize, hey, you know, God has no favorites. You know, right. in Romans 2, 11, it says he has no favorites. And so you, you know in the back of your mind while you're reading it that <laughs> the same way that God used him, the same power that was in him can flow through us. Naturally, it'll look different right. because God has an assignment that's different for everyone. But the discouraging part of it is, is that you realize that unless you begin to move in that direction, so you really can't fulfill your entire assignment unless that power is flowing through you. So true. And it was Charles Finney that provoked that because um, he was an uncompromising minister. I mean, he, he is, I, I can't wait to get to heaven to meet him <laughs> because he was, he was one we'll of the We'll have a kind. big dinner party with <laughs> Charles Finney and ask him <laughs> yeah. all the questions. I don't know if you're familiar with who Charles Finney is. They call him, his nickname is the father of revival. And he was really the pioneer of the second great awakening really throughout the 1800s. And he's written so many books, um, Power of God, Revivals of Religion. His autobiography is so inspiring to many revivalists today. Um, but I know there was one book in particular you read that really lit you up to get started on this journey. Can you tell us about like what you read that kind of provoked it for you? Yes. Uh, the title was Power of God, actually. And um, while I was reading, just within the first few minutes, <laughs> I realized, okay, um, this guy is not playing around. <laughs> and, like uh, introduction. One hundred percent. I I hadn't even got to like page seven yet, and I'm like, this guy means business. And, yeah. And one of the things that he really emphasized was, if you're not praying, you're playing. And he was very pointed about that, about making sure that your life is constantly in a state of prayer, whether it's just praying in your head, you're praying in your heart, you're praying out loud. And for me, I'm like, okay, wherever I go, even my car will be a moving sanctuary going down the street. So and and he was the one that provoked that. And he just, he, he ruined my life <laughs> in a very positive way, but he ruined it. He ruined it because my life could never be the same again. Right. I could never be content. How good, though, are books like that that really challenge the status quo and get you to think, you know, there is something more available. And I just it's almost like I always say. When Jesus says he's like, he who has more will be given. But it's like once you have something all of a sudden there's this revelation where you realize there's so much more, there's so much more. There's yes, so much there's more. so much more. And, and I don't know if you've ever thought this because I, I kind of got caught in this mentality that, okay, God picks certain people. Oh, totally. Right? Totally. And the rest of us just kind of stand back and glean from <laughs> the fact that God picked them and they have a phenomenal gift and we get, all get to glean from it. <laughs> And then to realize and have that revelation that um, that's really a false thought. Right. It's a totally false thought. And, so and for those of us that say, look, 
I believe that I'm not just on this earth to just walk through it and make it. Right. right? I'm supposed to make an impact. So good. And, and once that sets in and becomes a revelation, that's when life begins to become fulfilling in the midst of chaos. That's so and, good. And um, I'm going to encourage you to pray a prayer similar, maybe not the same words, but similar to the prayer that I prayed. I would tell God, Lord, you know, you know my life. You know how I've been living, even as a pastor. And I want you to use me as an example of someone who wasn't seeing any healings, any miracles at all. Use me as an example of someone that went from nothing to operating in the more, operating with power. And sure enough, he answered that prayer. I know he'll answer the same prayer for you because that's his will for you. You know, I love that you just pray that. And I feel like if you're watching right now, um, you just right now, I believe there's an anointing for faith for you to actually believe what God says. And as we continue this conversation, I believe that faith inside of you is going to increase to the point of overflowing, where all of a sudden it's not like, do I have to do this? Right. Do I have to do that? But I can feel right now for every person watching, it's like that river of living water is starting to bubble up inside of you and it's about to gush forth. So stay tuned as we talk more about what the Holy Spirit can do in you and through you. Welcome back to Something More. I just believe that you right now are becoming full of faith. And I just have this crazy thought of what could happen if every person watching this episode would say, you know what? I'm actually going to believe, I'm going to receive, and I believe we'll see a ripple of revival as people start to say, wait, God can use me like he uses Jesse and Frankie and Sid and many others. So I just want you to lean in a little bit more right now, get a little bit more expectant. So Frankie, what are you seeing God do right now? Now, since you've believed in the Holy Spirit, now you're ignited to really be full of God's power and love. What are some things you're seeing like in real life? Okay. So I love it when people ask this question because God has been so good to me to allow me to have these experiences. But, you know, I want to um, emphasize to the lis listeners, um, apologize about that slur, but I'm excited for you. I want to emphasize to you guys that the, the process that, that carries you into these moments where you have these divine testimonies, it starts with crying out in private and then taking risks in public. So good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you just, you cry out, right? Yes. And so um, let me think of a, a testimony. Okay, so we were in Costa Rica. And uh, it was some friends of mine. We rented this bus and we got a bunch of bags of food and we went into this really poor community and we just started passing out these bags of food. And it was so crazy, Jesse, because when we showed up, there was only three people out on the street and we had like a hundred so bags, <laughs> right? We're like, oh my goodness, we're going to be eating turkey for the next <laughs> three years. And so we started passing it out to these three families and all of a sudden, family starts showing up and and we actually wow. wish that we had more bags of food wow. really so we passed out the food and then i stood up on the first step of the bus and i said hey we are out of food i said but jesus is here and anytime jesus is among us healings take place 
Uh, when he showed up in the Bible, healings right. take place. Every time. Right. And I don't even know if they're Christians, okay? <laughs> I have no idea, okay? And you can look in some of their eyes and you see some of like the grandmothers. You can see in their eyes that yeah. they've been praying for years. Yeah. And then everyone else is like, they're looking at me like, do you have another turkey, right? <laughs> and so um, I said, is there anyone here? And, and this was very early on um, once the breakthrough and the healing started happening. And so now I'm taking that risk, right? I'd have already cried out in private. And so I said, is there anyone here? And there's like, I don't know, like 30 or 40 people. Uh, everyone else had kind of walked away after they got their turkey. <laughs> and I said, is there anyone here who needs healing? Nobody raised their hand. You're Not like, one on, person. No one and I'm like, I know you guys don't have medical insurance, okay? <laughs> like, and nobody Stop. is sick. I'm like, okay. And, I'm, and it dawns on me, okay, I'm this American guy who needs an interpreter. Right. They don't know who I am. And right. so there's no confidence there. And so I need to provoke it, right? And so I look to the left. We're out on the street, and there's this, like, cantina. Where, you know, they're just selling alcohol, and there's chips and peanuts there. Yeah. And I see this this guy and he's leaning up against the wall in front of this cantina and you can clearly see he's blind like his right. eyes look like milk right okay, so he was blind blind blind, blind. <laughs> like not like partially blind or like I shouldn't be driving blind like you know blind. not thin yeah and so I thought to myself well if God heals him Everybody else will believe. <laughs> but I've never prayed for anyone who was blind and then they saw further than that I've never even see it, seen it happen so I invite like him over. For everyone watching, this I'm is super too, scary. I know, I'm so scared. And so I'm like, you know what? Let's take the risk. Nothing's happening anyway. And so here in Costa Rica. I, they're, they're never going to see me again. I'm out of here. And so, and, and again, nothing was happening anyway. There's right. no healings happening anyway. So if, if God doesn't back me up on this, you know, no loss. Right. So I invite him over and I ask everyone, I said, if he gets his eyesight back, how many of you will believe that Jesus can heal? All the hands went up, right? Yeah, if that happens. <laughs> so I, the guy, I invited him over. He didn't even raise his hand. I'm like, come over here. So I pray for him a commanding prayer, right? In the name of Jesus, eyes open now. And, you know, prior to, you know, moving and healing, I'd pray for like, I don't know, like 30 minutes because I was just scared to stop praying because if they <laughs> didn't like, get healed. Please, Jesus, please, Jesus, please go right now. <laughs> I don't know if I was praying for them or for me, right? Now. I was like scared. <laughs> yeah. So w when Jesus prayed for healing, he used like, I, I went through the scriptures in, in the gospels. He uses like seven or less words. Yeah. Right. So I'm not Jesus. So I use like 14 or less <laughs> words. Right. So as in the name of Jesus, eyes open. And now we command you by the authority of Jesus Christ. Now I look at him. He can't see anything. So I'm like, oh, Jesus. So Jesus prayed for a blind man twice in, right. in Mark chapter eight. Right. And so I'm like, well, I'm going to go for it again. You pray for him. Same kind of prayer. Nothing. Jesse, <laughs> immediately a circle of sweat came about on my back. Like I could feel my shirt sticking to my back. <laughs> and I felt everyone that was watching, you know, the little bit of faith they did have it's was gone. gone. Yeah. And I'm like, oh God. And so I thought, well, Jesus prayed twice. I'm not, I'm going to pray a third time. <laughs> and this was in 2020. And so everybody's got a mask on, yeah. on top of it all. Right. Oh, wow. So I pray for him again in the name of Jesus. And then he grabs his mask, pulls it up over his eyes and starts sobbing. Whoa. And I thought to myself, well, I didn't got, I didn't ask for the Holy Spirit to make him sob. Right. Right. That wasn't the prayer. But the fact that this is happening that was proving to me wow. that he was working. Right. So my faith goes straight You're past like, okay, the cloud. The of Jesus. <laughs> yes, yes. I'm yeah. like, okay, he's here. He's here. And so now I know he, he can see, right? So I'm just waiting. I'm waiting. He pulls the mask down and he starts looking at people. And to see someone who's never seen before begin to see, it's overwhelming. Wow. He starts seeing and looking at people wow. in the crowd. We're all emotional. Yeah. And so then I asked, is there anyone here who needs to be touched by Jesus? 
hands start popping up all over the place. <laughs> Everybody's getting healed. And all of a sudden, whether they were Christians prior wow. or they weren't, they were Christians as of that day. Yes. And so it was a powerful moment. Wow. I just love that. And I, I just think that it's so amazing because miracles really do lead people to understand that Jesus is real, he's alive, and it leads people, signs and wonders lead people to the Messiah. And so right now, I just pray that you would actually start to believe that God could use your hands to see miracles and lead people into salvation. So stay tuned because we're going to talk more about what faith can can do in your life. Call or go online at SidRoth.org to get Frankie Mazapika's brand new book, Your Divine Invitation. Access the Holy Spirit to complete your assignment. Plus receive Charles Finney's classic book, Power From God. You'll also get the exclusive two-part audio CD teaching series, Your Prayers of Power. It's all yours for a donation of $39. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9905. With Frankie Mazapika's new book, you will walk supernaturally every day in the same bold power that Jesus gave His disciples and speak out commanding breakthrough prayers like Jesus did. Become comfortable in taking risks for God as you gain more confidence in giving words of knowledge, words of wisdom, prophecy, healing, and receiving and giving impartations. With Frankie's two CD audio set, Your Prayers of Power, you will discover how being desperate for God unleashes the power of the Holy Spirit in your life. Pursue a greater partnership with the Holy Spirit by taking six practical steps so you can be the move of God and step into your unique God-given assignment. And with Charles Finney's classic book that empowered Frankie launching him into supernatural living, you will receive an outpouring of powerful anointing to teach and preach God's Word in a way that really gets through to others and brings people to a point of action. Learn all the secrets behind prevailing prayer, holy living, being clothed in God's power, and much more. You are the move of God. Where you go, you should see miracles and healings happen. It's within you, it's around you. You've been anointed for this time right now. I believe that you will be equipped and inspired and you'll see more of God move in your life than ever before. Call or go online at SidRoth.org to get Frankie Mazapika's brand new book, Your Divine Invitation. Access the Holy Spirit to complete your assignment. Plus receive Charles Finney's classic book, Power From God. You'll also get an exclusive two-part audio CD set, Your Prayers of Power. It's all yours for a donation of $39. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9905 or send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural. P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9905. To something more. I wish all of you were in the studio with us today because we're just having so much fun because God's fun and having faith is fun and miracles are just really fun. And all across the world, you know, there's talks about revival and revival that's coming, but I'm one of those crazy people that actually believe we're in revival right now. Mm -hmm. I believe that it's the beginning, but I just don't want to discount the days of small beginnings. And I think there's so many testimonies right now of God pouring out his spirit all over the world. Yes. And it's almost like this revival is not contained to one ministry, one city. Yes. But whoever's saying like, pick me, right. here I am, he's yes. like, Tag you're it. Yes. Tag you're it. Yes. And it's like these testimonies are flooding in. So Frankie, what what are you seeing right now? What do you believe God's doing? What's available? Yes. So I like the illustration you just gave. Tag you're it. Tag you're it. <laughs> and and as a as a kid, uh, and you're playing tag, you know, it's almost like, you know, certain people get tagged. 
But, you know, when you begin to walk with the Lord, you get tagged if you ask to be tagged. <laughs> it's like, will you tag me? You know, because that's the desire of God. So good. And, you know, in Romans chapter 11, verse five, it says that at this present moment, God is gathering a remnant of believers at this present moment. And so you are a remnant. And what's the definition of remnant? So remnant is a small piece of the whole. And when you look at the 8 million people that are on the planet, there is a small piece of believers that are trusting in God, calling out to God, and you are a part of the remnant. Otherwise, you wouldn't be watching, <laughs> right? So, I mean, the Holy Spirit has drawn you. Like It says that you are drawn. Actually, it says it exactly like this. No man, it was, how does it say? God, God draws people to himself. And so you are being drawn towards him. And so I believe, Jesse, that those who are feeling that draw so is an invitation from the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And, and like I said earlier, um, the, the miracles and the healings, uh, I don't think I said this earlier, but it's just coming to my <laughs> mind. I believe they're not just going to be taking place in the sanctuary. Yeah, so I believe good. it's going to take place on the sidewalks. So I think everyone is just going to be looking and they're going to take the risk and they're going to see it for themselves. And I, I really believe that that's next. Yeah. You know, it's funny. We, um, so we run a ministry and we do revival events around the country. And we were just in New York City yeah. and we were out on the street in Washington Square Park and saw thousands of people just there for a new age festival. Yes. And all of a sudden though, the Holy Spirit just came and tarot card readers started repenting and giving their life to the Lord oh my goodness. just because they felt the power of God. And I think what you're saying, Frankie, is so true. It's like, you know, because most people watching right now, maybe you're watching and you're in your car or your house right now. Most people are not in full time ministry. They're not going to no. preach from a pulpit. Sure. But what we're seeing is, again, it's like if you want to be tagged by the Holy Spirit, if you want to be used in this revival right now, I actually just want you to lift up your hand. I know yes. it sounds funny, but I think it's a prophetic act to just say, like, here I am. And I believe that what Frankie said is a word for you. And I want you to just put your hand up like this. I'm going to do it with you. Yes. And I believe we're going to see this revival and the glory of God spread onto the streets, onto the beaches, onto the fields, in your churches, in your workplace. So Frankie, will you just pray for them to just believe in impartation to um, receive and believe yes. and go out in boldness yes. and that risk? Yes. You know, I'm excited about praying because um, what Jesse just said is not scripted. I mean, she, and in fact, this whole show is not scripted. It's being led by the Holy Spirit. But just then she felt that prophetic call. And so this is for you. And um, I just want to pray that right now. Lord, I thank you that you have a call on their life. And now, Holy Spirit, begin to remind them that they have been anointed. Begin to remind them that your power is residing in them. In Jesus, begin to draw them and show them who to pray for. Allow their eyes to be able to see these highlighted people. Some people just stick out to you. They're being highlighted. And I want you to have the courage. In Jesus' name, I speak courage into your life to walk up to these people and say, I believe the Lord wants me to pray for you. And I know that when you take that risk, in the name of Jesus, you will begin to see signs and wonders and your testimonies of what God has done will be the story of your life. Amen. Gosh, there's just such an anointing right now of faith. I can feel it in the studio. And I just really, I want you to maybe watch this a hundred times over and over and over again until all of a sudden your flesh and your mind come into alignment with what God's will for you is. And that's to live a life, a supernatural life. Yes. And I just love what you shared earlier of being in the secret yes. and praying and 
prevailing prayer, contending, yes. but then on the other part of it yes. is that risk. Yes. And so I'm praying that you feel the presence of God. You can feel his anointing and love for you. But then all of a sudden you're like, okay, today. We're going for it. Today is the day of risk. <laughs> We're going for it. <laughs> going yes, for it. yes. So share your testimonies with us. And I mean, like when you click off this episode, go to Starbucks, go to Chipotle, start praying and just see what God does. Thank you for watching Something More. This has been a powerful episode and we can't wait to hear what God does. Thanks for watching.